Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we are talking about everyone's favorite German battleship, at tier 8 at least, that's not the Tirpitz or the Odin, the Bismarck. So the Bismarck is the tier 8 tech line battleship for the German battleship tech tree. You're coming off of the Nisenau, which is, in my opinion, one of the highest highs of the German battleship tech line. Again, we're talking about the battleships, not the battle cruisers. And then you get to the Bismarck, which has gone through quite a number of changes over the years and is in a certain place right now, which if you take a gander at the title of this video, you can probably guess for yourself what my opinion of her right now is. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, Bismarck in Modern World of Warships. Now this is, of course, probably one of the most sought after ships for many players who first installed World of Warships because it's the Bismarck, you have the Battle of the Denmark Strait, and then of course the Hunt for Bismarck and such that of course gives her name quite a bit of attention. And when many a player grinds to the Bismarck, they find she's fairly lackluster, but we'll take a look at her today and see just how she's doing in today's World of Warships here in a minute. We're going to go ahead and go through her stats and such, look at her armor and talk about the commander module build for her. Then, of course, like we do in these look back at videos, we'll take a minute and discuss how she's doing today in World of Warships and if she's worth grinding to or if you are grinding through the German battleship line to get to the Preussen, is she, is she just one to free XP through. Alright, so the Bismarck, starting off with, of course, her armor layout, she has actually a pretty good set of armor. She has a 32mm bow with a 60mm almost, almost complete wraparound icebreaker bow. There's a little, like, two pixel line in the front where that 60mm strip doesn't wrap around, but, I mean, shoot. It's essentially going to for, uh, function as an icebreaker bow, unless you get some pinpoint precision precision aiming from a, a Yami, a Musashi, or something with 18-inch or bigger guns. Now, her side armor, her upper belt is 160 millimeter, and her main belt is 320 millimeters of armor. And then right below the waterline, it's 245, where it then transitions into the torpedo protection. She has a 60mm stern strip too, but it does not fully cover the stern. Her stern is once again 32. The stern and bow deck is 32. Mid deck is 50mm all up and down her mid deck. Now her citadel, if you take away the exterior armor, is below the waterline. And it also has some nice turtle back armor to where, to where essentially you will not be citadeling the Bismarck up close in a brawl or even at mid-range. It's not until you get to extremely long ranges with plunging fire that you will sit it up the Bismarck or the Tirpitz or the Brandenburg, which shares the Bismarck's hull. Now, of course, too, this does mean that the ship does get vibe-checked quite hard by AP bombs. Anyone who's played Bismarck or who's played it in a CV against Bismarck knows that as well. Her survivability, she has 69,000, nice, 200 hit points at tier 8, which is pretty respectable for, for tier 8. It's on the chunkier side, actually. With a 22% torpedo damage reduction, which is pretty non-historically accurate. I mean, except for the one torpedo that hit the rudder, the Bismarck hull is actually completely intact. Researchers were able to determine this I think in the early 2000s when we we actually had ROVs that were tiny enough to get into the interior spaces in the Bismarck, they dived the wreck in, none of the torpedo bulkheads were breached. There it is. There's the torpedo bulkhead. It's pretty intact. You can see that it's not dented, it's not perforated, it's not buckled, it's absolutely seamless and perfect all the way down. This ship, except for, again, the one torpedo that hit the rudder, did not have any breaches in its torpedo armor after eating quite a few torpedoes courtesy of the Royal Navy. But in the game, she has 22% torpedo damage reduction, which is terrible. But yeah, it's a game. There, of course, has to be changes made for balancing. And speaking of changes made for balancing, the main battery guns 
All right, so on the Bismarck, you have eight 380 millimeter 15 inch guns that reload on 26 seconds base. You have a 180 turn time with 28.8 seconds with the build that I'm running, and I'll throw it up here for you guys again. I'll actually remember to do this editing mount pattern because I forgot to do it in yesterday's video. Which, of course, you may notice I do have Luchens on the Bismarck because he's simply one of the best commanders you can get in the game. I would highly recommend you guys pick him up, especially if, uh, if you have a lot of premium German ships. All right, and a maximum dispersion of 272 meters, which is not that great. And a maximum range of 21.2 kilometers, which is actually pretty good for tier 8 standards and also kind of odd. We'll talk about that again here more in a minute. HE, you have a maximum damage of 4,400 on these 15-inch HE shells. They have a 34% chance of causing a fire, which actually isn't bad considering the reload time of the main battery guns, and an armor penetration capacity of 95 millimeters, and the HE comes out of the tubes at 820 meters a second. Now her AP has a maximum damage of 11,600, and they come out the tubes at 820 meters a second as well. So the German AP is also quite nice for the battleships. They, it has a very nice flat arc. It hits extremely hard. If you do manage to connect shots with the Bismarck, you are going to be punching your target like you had 16 inch guns almost. This AP does hit really, really hard when it does connect, but of course that when it does connect, Asterisk is a, of course, a pretty big Asterisk to have. And she has a Sigma of 1.8, by the way, if you did not know that. So on paper, 26 second reload, 1.8 Sigma, and we talked about the Georgia yesterday, which also had a 26 second reload and 1.8 Sigma on its 18 inch guns and how accurate those guns are. Well, uh, the Bismarck doesn't really fare here that well in the accuracy department. Now, it's actually better than when I played through the Bismarck the first time way back in, God, uh, four years ago. They gave the German battleships the American battleship dispersion um, radius, which essentially means, I'm sorry, uh, elliptical, whatever you want to call it, ellipse, that's, that's the correct term there where the shells will be a little bit more consistent and have a little bit more of a tighter pattern to it versus the old German battleship ellipse, which is absolutely terrible. So the Bismarck actually got, along with the rest of the German battleships, a pretty nice buff. I think that was almost a year ago now that they did that. All right, so moving on to a secondary gun. She has eight by two of the 105 millimeter guns. So 16 of those in total with a reload time, again with the build that I'm running on them, of 2.9 seconds and a maximum range of 11.5 kilometers. And these 105s will do 1,200 maximum damage. They have a 5% chance of causing a fire on the target, which is pretty nice. And they will pin 26 millimeters of armor because they are the German HE shells. You only have to divide by four when calculating the HE pin of German HE. So that's pretty nice. And they come out the tubes at 900 meters a second. Then you get 12 of the 150 millimeter guns, which is excellent. These have a reload time of 6.4 seconds. Maximum range of 11.5 kilometers, maximum dispersion, I'm sorry, maximum damage of 1700, 8% chance of causing a fire here on the 150s, and they come out the tubes at 875 meters a second. So you have 12 guns, 12 of your secondary guns, which can pin 32 millimeters of armor, which is the last major armor threshold in the game. That's very nice. And then you get 16 105s, which can pin up to 26 millimeters of armor without IFHE. I wouldn't really recommend taking IFHE on the Bismarck with the Tirpitz because there will be situations where you do need your main battery guns to shoot HE because you're going up against tier 10 and super ships now. So you're going to have situations where you can't overmatch any of their armor with your main battery guns. Well, any of, your, uh, any of their bow armor, of course, with your main battery guns. So... You're going to need to sling HE, and plus that 5% fire chance on those 105s with a 2.9 second reload time, that's that's pretty nice. You will be starting quite a few fires with these secondary guns. She does get an airstrike. AA with the B-hull, which is the upgraded AA hull. You have an A rating of 71. Um, It's nothing to write home about. It's there. It doesn't do much, but it's there. Against like tier 6 CVs, you might take a plane or two when they attack you, but that's about it. Maneuverability, her maximum top speed is 32.6 knots with the speed flag. She has an 850 turning circle radius, 
and a rudder shift time of 16 seconds. Kasuma with the ca uh, commander, no, sorry, not with the commander skill, with the module gets down to 14.3 kilometers. You can, of course, crank that down by another about 10% to get around a 12 ish kilometer detection with the commander skill if you so choose so. And for Xbox, oh, gimmicks doesn't really have gimmicks per se. It does have hydroacoustic search, which is wonderful. It goes out to 5 kilometers and is active for uh, 100 seconds, reloads at 114 seconds. You get your choices of fighter or spotter. I personally take fighter because it's the only real deterrent you have against CVs in this thing. You can take spotter if you want to. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend it. You get a repair party, of course, which regens 415 HP per second and is active for 30 seconds. Reloads at 76 seconds. And then you get a damage con that is active for 16.5 seconds, which is pretty nice. It's not as long as the American damage con, but it's a fairly lengthy damage con. And you get a, a reload time on that of 76 seconds as well. Alright, so what's the Bismarck like in today's World of Warships? This is a fairly old battleship now in the game. I think it's getting on, what, four, five years old now? Six years old now? The German battleships were like the third line to be added into the game. Uh, battleship line to be added into the game. Well, she is unfortunately not doing that well she has a lot going against her in the way that the game is played so often now at higher tier the armor that protects you from getting citadel and getting the, the crap slapped out of you at close range is very 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 well chunky at long range and at higher tier now we have so many ships that have large very large caliber guns we've had an influx of 457 millimeter 18 inch guns at tier 10 now we have a lot of 20 inch ships now at tier 10 as well that love to see this thing because they know this thing's an easy 10 to 15k on one salvo and it is and when i'm playing those ships too i think the same thing when i see a bismarck i'm like oh well look at bismarck i can i can easily chunk that for 20k or any other German battleship for that matter, it's just that this is a tier 8 and it sucks when you're at double up tier, then you you lose a, you know, a seventh of your health in one salvo from some Shikishima or Yama that's sitting on the other side of the map. And on top of that too, look at the superstructure on this thing. This thing eats a lot of HE and that's no secret. It's been doing that for years now and as do other German battleships. And again, there's a lot of HE spammers at tier 10 now and CVs too. The ship was never really great against CVs, but now we have the likes of, of course, the uh, the Nakamal at tier 10 that, oh god, can, again, just eat this ship up. And then we have submarines now, which the ship has terrible torpedo protection, and submarines have, of course, homing torpedoes. Granted, the ship is fairly maneuverable, so it's probably one of the better ships to be in if there's submarines in the game, but god help you if you mess up and wind up eating that submarine's full complement of torpedoes in this ship. So what winds up happening is that the Bismarck, which has been known for being a, a brawler in game, and it is a good brawl, when it can get into those situations where you can brawl, it is a very good brawler one of the better ones in the game but those situations don't happen at higher tier so much anymore and I've talked about this with many a secondary ship that used to be well again and still are great brawlers but can't really do what they used to do now anymore because of how higher tier is so what winds up happening is you have this ship that used to be good at that in these high tier games because tier 8's up tier double up tier so 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 much now in the uh, seven or so matches I played for this video that you're watching one of them in the background the first one's probably already over by now six of those games were tier 10 games I had one game where I was top tier one game out of seven games whoo that's uh that's pretty rough battleships are some of the worst ships to get double up tier in probably tied or just below the CVs because getting a double up tiered in a tier 6 CV to a tier 8 game is terrible. Getting double up tiered in a tier 8 CV that isn't the Enterprise to a tier 10 or the Kaga to a tier 10 game is equally as horrible. So yeah, those two classes are like right there in terms of how much it sucks getting double up tiered in those classes. Um, yeah, that, 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 that's terrible. And then you do have a 21.5 kilometer main battery gun range, which is nice. It helps you stay in there. And with the reload time on the guns, sure, you throw enough crap at the wall, it's going to stick. 
but for many a match, you're going to find yourself taking pot shots at cruisers and battleships from like 18, 19 kilometers away, getting a shell or two to hit. And then, of course, because you have terrible armor for long range engagements, you get you know, a chunk for 10k, 12k, 13k in the returning salvo. So, what you have to do is be essentially a heavy cruiser with terrible main battery gun accuracy. You have to be very vigilant about your surroundings in Bismarck. You have to use that bow armor and that strip if you can on the front and keep your bow into the the enemy team as much as possible which does suck because that takes your eight 15 inch guns which is decent firepower when you're double up tier to four 15 inch guns which is eh firepower when you get double up tiered and four 15 inch guns that aren't that accurate at all which leads to a pretty miserable experience in this ship especially if you want to run a secondary build on it like i'm running in the matches you were you're watching in the background and honestly i wouldn't really recommend a secondary build in the bismarck anymore i would go for a main battery gun build you know start dumping thing points into the main battery gun accuracy start dumping points into survivability switch those modules out from the secondary modules to the main battery gun modules and the dispersion module to help you there that would be a, a lot, a lot uh, of a much better experience for most of you players that are stuck on this thing at tier 8. And t building into tankiness will help the ship out a lot, you know, especially if you take fire prevention and then concealment. And then you go back and you grab the, um, whatever it's called, survivability expert, where you get the boost to your cooldown time on your damage con and such. That would help the ship out a lot, and after playing, again, for a couple hours, the secondary build Bismarck, there were four of the seven matches where I literally got five secondary hits. Yeah, with a full secondary build. And in the other two matches, I had one match where I actually got like a 200 secondary hits. That was a pretty fun match. Fairly short match because of what I had to do to get those secondary hits. And they had this match here where I think I got just over 100 secondary hits. And the only reason I was even able to do that well in the match that uh, either you watch or watching right now is a tier 10 match. Um, was because it was such a rollover from my team's side. You know, we were absolutely slaughtering the enemy team. I knew I could just go for it. And, you know, have fun in the Bismarck. And I did well. Then, actually, I derped into an island and died. Because that's, you know... You know, that that's that's about how it goes a lot of times. So, yeah. That's the only reason I was able to do that well in that match. So, the Bismarck is in a rough spot right now. I, again, it's kind of sad saying that on the Bismarck, the best build for you to go for is a main battery gun build or a traditional battleship build this ship does certainly need some love in one of a few ways i think they should either raise the secondary range out to like 11.8 or maybe even 12 kilometers because 11.3 kilometers at tier 8 especially again when you're getting double up tier all the time it's so short it's so short 12 kilometers would be a lot more comfortable in this ship or maybe boost the secondary accuracy a little bit as well which i mean again since the commander rework where it takes 15 seconds for the secondaries to spool up that first bit of um accuracy increase then another what 30 seconds for the rest that that takes forever especially again when you have a 11.3 kilometer range with the secondary flag and again all the corresponding secondary modules equipped too again keep in mind it's a full secondary build so that that's just painful right there or maybe a boost to the main battery gun accuracy a little bit again i'm not saying it needs to be like georgia accurate but just a little bit more accurate to where when you're firing at 18 kilometers plus like you're so 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 often forced to at tier 10 games yeah actually land like two shells instead of one just a little bit of love i think would help the bismarck out quite a bit in today's world of warships as far as grinding through it honestly it's a bit of a pain and it hurts me to say this but yeah it probably is worth grinding through because the fdg is in a much better spot which that sounds weird hearing especially as someone who grinded through 
the old FDG that wasn't at all fun to grind through. FDG's gotten a lot more love than the Bismarck has over the years in terms of buffs, so that's a ship I would recommend you, you know, spend your time in grinding, because that, that ship does play a lot like Preussen does, and the Bismarck kind of does too now with the way that you have to play the mainline German battleships, but it's, it's so painful seeing what these ships were how fun they were back in the day and again don't get me wrong like i'm not saying they were it was all sunshines and roses for the bismarck and eisenhower and fdg back in the day no they, they were pretty rough but i think the last time they were actually any good was within that first like three or four months after they buffed the dispersion ellipse to the american dispersion ellipse there was that sweet zone in there for some time when these ships were really good and the the meta at higher tier wasn't so just pushed out and such that you could get in there, do some damage, have some fun, have a decent game, and not have to you know risk just throwing your ship away like you have to now almost if you want to have a decent game in this thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. You do, of course, have the matches every now and then when you do have those awesome brawling moments, but it's far and few in between. Far and fewer than it than it used to be, but that is the Bismarck today. So Wargaming, if you're listening, give the ship a little bit of love. She deserves it. It's the Bismarck after all. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We're going to 35,000 subs, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're all having a wonderful Wednesday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.